Is this tank worth the 28 tokens that it will cost you to get? In my opinion, no, it is not worth it. The phase one is better. Go get a phase one and a char and both of them will still be cheaper than getting this thing. So if that's all you wanted from the video, there you go. See you later. For the rest of you, let's take a little bit of a dive into this tank and why I don't think it's necessarily worth it. On paper, this tank is very, very good. It has very good DPM. Accuracy is a little bit lackluster, but hit points, armor, make up for it. And on paper, it looks decent. However, on paper doesn't show you just how bad this Capola is and the fact that it can be overmatched on the roof by anything that has a greater than 120 caliber gun. For many people, they may go onto Tanks GG, take a look at the armor layout and come to the conclusion, this is pretty good. And I don't blame you. I did the same. Because when you go ahead, you angle your tank, you get it at this kind of angle, where if you imagine that this bit's blocked off, that's a very, very good amount of armor to have if they're just shooting you like this. You'll be able to quickly bounce stuff, especially if you're rocking backs and forwards, making it harder for them to shoot you. There's a tiny spot here that they'll be able to shoot. And if you look at the actual visual model, you're not really gonna be able to see that very reliably. However, if you fire heat at this vehicle, it starts to fall apart quite a fair amount. And bear in mind, this is with 320 heat. This is not 330 or 340 heat, which would make this even worse. So this is quite a problem. And if you over angle, you then open up this bit to just be shot instantly. And you only need 300 odd heat pen to go through this. Not to mention that this also opens up around here where you can get shot and in the turret. And the turret, if you actually go to a little bit higher and uh, to a bit left or a bit to the right, the entire thing is just so easy to pen, especially with heat rounds. Against APCR, sure, and AP, there's lots of little different ridges and angles and whatnot that you might ricochet off. But with heat, there's very little that could actually protect you. And that means that when you're facing someone, if there's more than one person in front of you, off to the right, off to the left, and you can't, you know, quickly face each one one by one, you're going to take a lot of damage because this turret is not very good at shooting at someone unless they are directly in front of you. And then we move on to the overmatching. Now, this is against a 430U. This has AP rounds and it will go straight through the turret of this vehicle. And no matter what you do, if you aim for the Capola, you're probably going to miss and then go low and you'll still pen, which means if you are in a tank that has a greater than 120 caliber gun and you are shooting one of these things, aim for the Capola. If you miss, you'll probably go low and then pen anyway. If you do hit the Capola, however, you will pen. This is not like a phase one Capola, where when you shoot the phase one Capola, it is very angled and sloped and AP rounds really do struggle against the phase one. With this, it doesn't matter. You will hit it, you will pen it. The engine deck is a little bit different. You are going to need greater than 135 millimeter caliber gun to go through this because it is 45 millimeters thick. So if you do go ahead and be slightly taller than it, you are gonna need a greater than 135 caliber gun. So if you are in like an E100, for example, and you're using a big gun, AP round straight through the engine deck and it will probably burn as well. But we'll move on to that in a second. So the armor of this thing isn't great. It is very easy to pen in the Capola, even against lower tier tanks. So as much as on paper, this may look like an absolutely amazing tank. Once we get into the games, it's it's really started to fall apart when you when you need to actually use your armor. If you can face people from the right hand side, so you're like this and you can side scrape and hide this Capola, it can work. It's not a useless tank, okay? This is by no means as bad as the TT-130M, okay? I think, yes, this is definitely better than the TT-130M, but this tank really does struggle against pretty much anyone that can see that Capola. Now, moving on to the gun, because fine, if the Capola is bad and you can be overmatched on the roof, that's just stuff that you need to watch out for. Is the gun any good? Yes and no. The problem is that although the DPM is really, really good, and it is definitely one of the biggest pluses of the tank, it's a little bit derpy. And given that 
it doesn't have very good dispersion values for the soft stats, and combined with the fact that this is a tank destroyer, not a heavy or a medium, you cannot put V-stab on the tank. So it has incredibly bad moving and tank traverse stats for the gun dispersions, and you can't really make them any better, because as we know, IRM does help with the moving dispersion, but not so much with the tank traverse. And the reason why this is such a bad thing is that you are constantly moving backwards and forwards, left and right, and trying to jiggle to hide that cupola or to try and prevent that cupola from being targeted as easily, and also just to, just to go backwards and forwards for side scraping, because you're in a rear mounted tank. It's imperative that you keep trying to move in this tank and not just sit still because people will then find the weak spot, especially if they're starting to aim down here. So the gun is pretty derpy and there's no real equipment that will make it better. Not even IAU. And I have even tried IAU on this vehicle, okay? As much as I might not agree with it, for this tank, I tried it, it went down to 0.32, the gun was still pretty bad. So does this then mean that the gun is absolutely horrible to use? No, it is a decent gun, okay? The only thing I'm really saying here is that the gun is derpy and you can't really do much about it. So let's now talk about the equipment on this tank because it's a weird one, okay? I want to use HP Turbo Rammer. However, you need a turbo because this thing is very, very slow without a turbo. It only goes at 35 kilometers an hour without one. So you need to get that to 40 to make it a lot more mobile around the map. So a turbo, 100% a mainstay in this vehicle, along with the rammer. It has very good DPM. You need that rammer to continue that DPM. Get it as high as you can so you can outclass many, many tanks. So that leaves the last slot available to you. And then this is where you could pick something for whatever you may use, okay? You may want to use IAU and get it down to 0.32 accuracy, although, in my opinion, hardening will be better, a better choice, I should say, than IAU, considering the type of play style that you probably want to adopt in this vehicle. You could use optics as your secondary loadout, and you may even want to get rid of the turbo in your secondary and go with vents as well, just to maximize your view range. Obviously, you cannot mount CVS because this is a tank destroyer. The only other one that I would suggest people might want to use is vents. Now, you could use vents, a hardening, and a rammer, and then have two different builds where you have, you know, one with a turbo, one without a turbo, and swap it out for hardening. And then you could have vents and a rammer to really combine that DPM to get it as high as possible. Although, the boost that vents gives, I'd rather have, if I'm going to be in close quarters maps, this setup, and then... On my other setup, which I have here, let me just mount this quickly. I then have something like this, where I have hardening, and then we have optics and a rammer. So for proc, I will just go into the mid. I have the hardening to give me that extra HP and be able to actually spot stuff to peek up. If I take a shot into the tracks, it's not going to bother me. I can quickly back off straight away, and I still have the viewing as well with the DPM. So this kind of thing for proc, and then for everything else, this is what I would go for. For field mods in this tank, you want to go with the standard field mods for the left hand side, which is left, right, right, as you would with absolutely every other tank destroyer in the game. And then when you come to the seventh one, this is kind of your choice. Now you could pick the right hand field mod to get your reload time down, or you could go to have better hit points and survivability in general because you'll get plus 20% to the protection of your crew from injuries if you choose the right one at the detriment to some DPM. Either one of these works. I'm not going to say which one you should pick because honestly, it's just down to you. You could pick either one and the tank would be fine. Let's be honest, the difference between having 6.55 second reload time and 6.96 is not too much that for the benefit that you would get for those hit points and the crew protection, some may have seen that as worth it, or some may just say, you know what, I only want the DPM, and that's absolutely fine as well. I personally am going to choose the right-hand side, but you could even choose neither of them if you were so inclined as well. And the final thing I want to speak about is the module damage on this vehicle. Now, I don't know how many other people have spoken about this, but this thing will take module damage a lot it will get ammo racked, it will get its engine knocked out, and it will get its crew knocked out a fair amount. Now, that may sway your decision on getting the left-hand field mod for the seventh one, or it may just be, you know what, doesn't really matter to me that much. I'll just repair my crew members, repair, heal my crew members, um, 
it doesn't really matter. But if you get shot in the lower plate, chances are your engine will go. If you get shot in the side here, chances are you'll get ammo racked. And if you get shot in the rear, you'll probably get ammo racked. So it is incredibly bad for getting module damage. I haven't been set on fire, I don't think. Maybe I did once. I might have done it once. But the module damage is quite bad. Now, I don't think it's so bad that it needs config on the vehicle. But you could maybe go for survivability suite. But it would need to be level 3. So that is just something to think about when choosing this vehicle. If you do get it, that yes, it will take module damage quite a bit. But now I want to finish off the comparison and the overall stats view of this tank by just comparing it to the phase one. And there's one thing that you need to take into consideration while I do this. That is this tank, the TS-60, costs 28 tokens. The phase one costs 12 tokens. Or some of you may have even got it for nine tokens back in the day. Because if you already have the phase one, I genuinely don't see any point of you getting a tier 60. Unless you're a tank collector. In which case then, this video is kind of irrelevant to you anyway. The first point that I want to say is that this tank doesn't come with a standard large repair kit like the phase one does. This is infinite use. It doesn't cost you anything and it gets a 5% better standard repair speed. So if you go ahead and look at what a standard large repair kit or a normal large repair kit will do, 10% to module repair speed. And the phase one, if we go and hover over it, 15% to module repair speed. Plus it will heal absolutely everything or repair absolutely everything that is wrong with your tank, just like a large repair kit normally would. Now, if this is just a bug with the press accounts and it will give you a standard large repair kit, then obviously you can wipe this from one of the points being negative towards a tier 60 compared to the phase one because they'll both be exactly the same. But let's now compare the guns. The tier 60, 258 standard pen, 320 heat pen and 60 HE pen with 400 alpha and 515 alpha on the HE rounds. The gun on the phase one gets exactly the same ammo loadout. The shells go slightly f slower on the AP rounds but faster on the heat rounds and exactly the same alpha on the HE with 340 heat though, so you get plus 20 millimeters of pen for the heat rounds. Meaning that this is way, way better to actually brawl with and actually deal damage to heavily armored tanks. You meet a mouse, 340 heat is just gonna go straight through that thing. You meet a mouse with 320 heat, it's not as reliable. And some of you may say, well, yes, Max, that's because the phase one's a heavy tank and the other one is, wait, a tank destroyer, so they should get more pen. I get that, I think, most of the new tanks are going towards 320 heat pen and about 311 APCR pen. That's how I feel they're trying to balance out the game moving forwards. So I can understand it. But if we're looking at a comparison, it really doesn't look so good, does it? When the phase one just has a better gun. Like, sure, it's not as much DPM. Nowhere near as much DPM, right? 2,700 with the exact same loadout. And it has, you know, the full crew skills and everything versus 3,600. That's a thousand more DPM on the tier 60 in comparison to a phase one, pretty much. However, the phase one's gun is more accurate and it just feels better to play with. It really does. This gun is much better than the tier 60 gun. So that means that it has a better gun, although less DPM, but overall a nicer experience with the gun what about the armor well the phase one's better as well because this capola is very very hard to pen and this capola is very very easy to pen not to mention this gets out overmatched at the top by 120 caliber and above whereas this doesn't yes it can't side scrape that well in the phase one it can don't get me wrong but it does stick out a little bit and you can get penned there if people know what they're doing. However, it can probably side scrape better than the tier 60 can. <laughs> so you know what? For hull armor wise, I'll give them a draw, but for the turret armor, it's not even a contest. The phase one's armor is much better than the tier 60. Mobility wise as well, this goes at 40 and this goes at 40 as well, but it's actually slower because it has less power to weight. So the phase one wins again. You're noticing a trend? If I was to give you a blind test onto which one was worth more tokens, which one would you say? And the problem is, I think Wargaming's really missed the mark with this one. Why 
create something that is just worse than the phase one. I think that they've even missed a mark. Well, they've made the phase one so good that it, it, everything else that they add just looks like it's inferior every single time. So let's now wrap this all up. I'm going to show you one game live. If it goes bad, doesn't matter. If it goes well, brilliant. I'm going to show you the raw gameplay of this vehicle. Okay, so we're on Overlord and of course we get into a tier 7 game, which gives this as much opportunity as is possible to show you the strengths of this tank. Bearing in mind, I have a 400 alpha damage gun, which means that against some tier, well, I mean tier 7s, yeah, I can nearly two shot that Hawk 12. I can definitely nearly two shot the 1375, you know, depending on what ammo I load, etc. If I've done two HE rounds, definitely uh, two shot the Hawk 12. But this, obviously, plus two, it's not good for anyone. Plus two is not a fun experience, whether you're top tier or bottom tier. If you're top tier, you don't have enough health to play with, where you can actually farm people and do lots of damage and feel like you actually have a very decent game. And if you're bottom tier, then, you know, you just don't really have fun either, do you? Because there's no one that you can pen and there's nothing much you can really do. So this is... Hmm. This guy's pushing up, which is a little bit annoying. You know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to go down here. I'm just going to see what this guy's doing. Let's see whether or not he's gone around onto the corner bit. Okay, so he's actually out over there. Now, the only problem is that I don't have maximum view range, which I actually forgot to mention. Uh, this doesn't get uh, 445 view range, even with field mods. Um, but as you can see, look, when I go forwards and backwards like this, you see how much it blooms out? And if I turn the tank as well, that's big. That is some big bloom. Uh, T29 has other idea. What's he shooting at? What? What are you aiming at? Okay. You know, I'm. He's doing his own thing. He's, um... Yep. Yep. I'm just going to go over here. Yeah. Let's see if we can shoot this T29. I'm going to load heat for him. Because if we can shoot him in the side of the turret, it would be very good. Probably don't need heat for the side of it, but... Better to be safe than sorry. Uh, another thing to mention, that I didn't, because I'm bad apparently, is that it doesn't have a fully traversable turret. Although, it has a traversable enough turret, I would call it. Let's be honest, if you're going to this point, you probably don't need a fully traversable one. Oh, there's also very slow on your action time there. Okay, so this seems clear in the mid, so here we are going to go over this way. And we are going to try and shoot this guy. Give him one as he's pushing through. And we'll just make sure that we try and hide as best as we can. Give him one more. Again, we're just trying to side scrape. Very well. Very good. And give him another one. 350. Eh, not great, but... We can hopefully just finish this guy off in a second. Nice. Okay. Now I just want to push forwards a little bit. An angle as well. Obviously, this is against tier 8s and tier 6s, so let's be honest, the armor is going to hold up okay. And I don't even need heat for any of these for what I'm shooting at. You know, I'm not going to need uh, heat rounds for a black prince, am I? My team is dying though, so we need to conserve our hit points. Or at least try and conserve them as much as we can. One more into him. Uh, I'd like to push forwards because the Type 68 behind us is going to be an issue. If this guy peeks up, which he is, lovely, we can get a shot into him. And he might still be there, to be fair. Doesn't appear to be. I'm running low on AP, though. With the amount of uh, DPM this tank has, I'm surprised that it has such little shells. Uh, that is one of the, uh, I'd say, biggest downsides of this tank. 
Okay. You know what? Let's just ignore them. Let's go over this way. This is uh, probably where our fight should be. Although, we are going to get surrounded in a second. So, it is not looking great for us. Might be able to actually use this... Uh, these houses to our advantage. Put one into his track. One more into his track. Very good. We just angle that okay. I'm just going to repair that so that I can actually get a shot out as well. Right, I'm going to put one into this guy's track here. Ah, he actually got one into me though. Try and turn to get a shot at this guy. We low roll, unfortunately. Oh, I'm just going to go for this. It's not great, but... Okay. Gun being damaged is a problem. <sighs> ELC is going to come up behind me, though, in a second. And then I can't really do much about him. Yeah, whatever. My gun's damaged. I can't really shoot anyone. Why doesn't he just come and why doesn't he just come and shoot me and take the hit? Why is he so scared of taking damage? He has a foul I can't one shot him. Why didn't he just take the <laughs> Whatever. So there we go. 4.4 nearly. 4-3. Um Yeah, I mean my team was pretty useless. So Yep. But there you go. That is how the tank is in an average game of water tanks. So after all of this, what is the final opinion? Well, it's definitely not better than a, t than a phase one. The tier 60 is not a phase one. And is it a bad vehicle? No, but it costs 28 tokens. You could buy a char and a phase one and still have tokens left over to go and buy some bonds or credit boosters than getting this vehicle. But do you know what else is 28 tokens in this game and has much more character? This thing. And that is a hell of a lot more fun than this. Thank you very much for watching. Let me know your thoughts down below. I'll see you all in the next one.